Greetings viewer, it's Ed Budd and I'm back. I'm a non-elite, shoe-hoarding fan of foam midsoles and continental outsole rubber. I'm back with a daily vlog for you today guys. I'm going to try and answer a question. I mean I've received loads and loads of viewer questions and they all seem to be centered around durability of the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. So what I've done is reached out to lots of people in the YouTube community, some YouTubers, some viewers, and I've pulled together lots and lots of photos, lots of images, and some video about durability of the Next Percent. I'm the sort of guy who likes to get lots and lots of primary research before I make a conclusion on something. So that's what we've done today. Is this shoe really worth shelling out a considerable amount of money for? So since I posted that 100 mile review of the Vaporfly Next Percent, I've received tons and tons of questions from viewers about durability, whether it's a good value shoe, whether they should shell out the pounds or the bucks or whatever currency it is they've got. Could be toilet rolls right now. Main question really was, is the Next Percent more durable than the 4%? or the 4% flying it. Are they a better investment? So lots and lots of people sent in clips and photos and things. I've tried to sort through those. Sorry if I've missed any out. It's certainly not personal. Going to focus really on the midsole and the outsole. So here's some of that evidence for you to make up your minds. So first up, my good buddy, Tim Gross. He's got a YouTube channel too. I'll put that in the description so you can check it out. Tim's a great guy and he's got some photos across to me of his various next percents various stages of destruction. So he's racked up about 246 miles in his green pair of Next Percent. He said they're still going strong, still feel really good. He suggests that you could probably run in them all the time if you really wanted to, apart from on some muddy trails. He's got a couple of other pairs of them, various different numbers of miles on those. As you can see, a more considerable amount of wear has to be expected on the pair with 246 miles. The other's still looking really great though. Michael Laird, sorry if I've pronounced that wrong, Michael. I can give it my best shot. He's from over in Denmark and he's sent across some pictures of his next percent. This pair's at 200 miles. Michael mentioned in his email to me that this pair are still holding up really, really well compared to the other pair of that have only got about 20 miles on them. You can see a little discoloration of the foam, which is to be expected, but the back rubber strips around the heel are still looking really great. Loads and loads of rubber left on the forefoot area and only minimal abrasions from debris, like rocks and stones, is all you can really see there. So thanks for sending those across to me, Michael. I do appreciate it. Tamlin Goodrich sent me some other pictures of his next percent. He's hit 800 kilometers in one pair. Yeah, I did say 800 kilometers. He said that most of this is on tarmac and track also. He's only very recently considered retiring these. He's been enjoying them that much. He did do a 110 kilometer ultra marathon in this pair of Next Percent. And he reported that they were top notch in terms of performance. They did an admirable job. He's just got a brand new pair to replace those, I think, probably about time to replace them. I think they've done a good stint there, a good innings. I mean, 800 kilometers is a huge amount from any running shoe, really. If they're still feeling great, then there we go. That says a lot. Thanks for sending those in, Tamlin. Jeff Custer is next from Houston, Texas. Hey, Jeff. So he's our next, next percenter. He's got about 83 miles on the pair you can see on screen right now. He comments that they still feel really, really great. Just a little bit of wear at the very front of the shoe in the rubber traction area there. Right on the toe area, actually, when you look at it closely. He's predominantly only used these for racing and just some light training before races, just to get accustomed to them, to be familiar with them. I did chuckle, though, at his fear of telling his wife that he might have to replace them at some point. So he's kind of only used them sparingly just for racing. I hope this doesn't get you into any trouble, Jeff. Thanks for sending those in for us. My good buddy, Lee Leggett, has sent in these images of his next percent. These are at 278 miles. Lee's kind of like me. He likes to keep a really, really good track on exactly how many miles a shoe's done. That's really important for me to do that. I kind of relish it, actually. I like to keep really up-to-date stats on all the shoes. Mainly for you guys, really. I want you to know that they're my honest opinions over specific amounts of use. So looking at Lee's shoes here, he mentions that the only real wear is on the outer heel, which isn't bad at all, really, um, if you think about it for a racing shoe. Certainly considering the distance covered, I mean, that's a huge amount of miles. Lee's a long-term viewer of the channel. I really do appreciate you sending those images across to us, Lee. Well done. A local boy now, local boy from Somerset. Mr. Kev Burton sent me some 
some images. You may well remember Kev if you've been following the channel for a while. He very, very kindly showed us his Kev percents, uh, some Nike by you custom next percents that he got created with the Flyknit Upper. I'll put a card for that at the end of the video so you can check it out. Now Kev's got over 200 miles in this set of next percents. And that also includes a 50 mile off-road race as well. So they've really been put through the ringer. Oh yeah, yeah, love these shoes. Uh, I was very lucky to get them, uh, the customized version. They were literally only out for, I'm guessing about a week or so. Couldn't really get on with the uh, next percents, the normals, uh, only because I felt the top, uh, sort of the upper uh, was a little bit stiff. Um, but the Flyknit version, absolutely amazing. Um, lucky to have them. I smile every time I run in them. They're just a, a great overall shoe. Um, in terms of wear, I'm just literally just tickling over to 200 miles. Um, 50 of that was off-road for my 50 mile uh, challenge. Uh, and they're just great. They're just really lightweight. They're really springy. They're more hard wearing than the 4%. And I'm really, really happy I got them. So um, pretty much every other day I look on the Nike website to see if they still do them. But obviously they didn't. It was a very short run. And as I'm discovering with Nike, they don't hang around. So um, yeah, overall, a brilliant shoe. Cheers, buddy. You can certainly see some wear up in that sort of four foot rubber area. Some rocks and things like that that Kev must have gone over but you can really see these have been put through the ringer, but they still look good. I really doubt that a pair of the 4% would look anywhere near this good after that race. So thanks for sending those in, Kev. We salute you. A long-term supporter of this channel, legend, Kev Burmaster, has sent me a load of bits and pieces. I've got some videos here and some images of the shoes. So uh, we'll hand you over to Kev. Hey guys, Kev here with uh, the Nike Cheap, I mean, uh, Next Percents. Going to talk about the upper midsole and the outsole of the uh, next percents. About 98 and 6 tenths of a mile on these shoes. Seeing uh, two marathons, one 10K, and a couple of training runs, longer tempo runs and such. Um, so first, the upper, really no signs of wear at all. It's a wrinkly shoe. It's wrinkly from the outsole to the midsole, but only other uh, only problem I've had is around this area of the outsole. But that's not due to the shoe, that's due to my feet. Um, I've got a larger left foot in volume, both in width and length, but at least I don't have two left feet. Ed, cue the, uh, the uh, Gary Flick on dog show uh, thing for me, please. So basically what happens is my, my left toes basically rubs up against this like little neoprene section, clear section here on longer races, and I'll get some pretty nasty blisters, but oh well. Love the shoe anyway. The midsole, um, again, very wrinkly, you know, uh, not going to really win any uh, shows with, with the uh, amount of wrinkle on it, but that being said, it still has a lot of pop to it. The shoe is really resilient um, in the Piba material, but it's still got a lot of rebound. Um, so there's a lot of foam there, and I, I don't see it breaking down anytime soon. Uh, the outsole is where I'm really seeing the most wear, but... If you look, it's basically just where I toe off. You see a little bit of high abrasion on the on the toe portion of the shoe, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. I mean, there's some wrinkling on the uh, on the outsole, but I mean, really nothing too bad. It's just that uh, high abrasion area. Well, let's go for a run. It's a beautiful day in sunny California. Eight miles in the Pegasus Turbo Two on an easy recovery run today. About eight minutes per mile, keeping it nice and easy. I had a workout yesterday. Uh, but um, that's not going to stop me from taking the next percent out for two miles in the uh, next percents to get 100.6 miles at my uh, goal half marathon pace about 540 a mile. I'm going to do a couple of drills and some dynamic uh, stretching and then we'll get on the road. So as Kev showed you there, there's a little bit of wear at the very front of the shoe in that toe off area. Apart from that, they're looking fantastic. He's hit literally dead on 100 miles with those. They're looking clean, they're still looking really crisp and that's considering some serious racing. Kev, I really appreciate you taking a lot of time to send in those videos for the channel. It really is over and above. Thank you very much.
Kev's given me some super tips as well on my running. I'll tell you what, they've revolutionized what I was doing. My tempo, pace, and top speeds really have gone through the roof since I've been using some of those tips, Kev. I really do appreciate it. Last but not least, we have some images from Kafuzi himself. Kafuzi, the closest we have to a running version of Poe Dameron. So Mike's fired me a few images of his next percent. He's got two pairs. So the green pair, you'll remember Mike wore those back in June of last year for the tunnel marathon. That pair has got about 125 miles on them now and there's around about 30 miles on the pink pair. So you can see there's only slight damage there from some rocks possibly in the forefoot traction area. That's the only real damage of note at all. They do look really good. Uh, 125 miles. The pink pair only really have about a marathon and a little extra training sort of beforehand on them. And there's very little wear there at all. So certainly after 125 miles, there's still a really, really usable shoe by the looks. Thanks for sending those over, Mike. We'll really appreciate it. I think it's safe to say that the next percent midsole and outsole are holding up way, way better than the 4% and the 4% flyknit before. I think there's some real conclusive proof there the foam just seems to hold up better. I've always suspected that there might be a slight difference in the formulation or something of the foam that's in the next percent in comparison to the Vaporfly 4%. Obviously you can make up your own minds whether they're worth the money, but certainly Nike seem to be supplying some restock of the next percent soon. It doesn't look as if it's going anywhere just yet. Is the Alpha Fly going to fare as well as the next percent? I don't know, but I'm certainly gonna take it up to 100 miles and we'll see where we stand there. My guess is that I don't think it will be as durable, but we'll find out. You see, these have got about 24 miles on each and this one looks way better. There's already a little bit of wear in the four foot rubber on the Alpha Fly. Interesting. Okay, so lots more content coming up this week for you guys, just to give you a little hors d'oeuvre, a little appetizer. I've got a viewer Q&A coming up based around the New Balance Fuel Cell TC and a comparison video with that shoe and the Hoka Only Only Carbon X and the Zoomfly 3. I think I'll also throw in the Zoomfly original into that one as well. Plus an initial run in the Reebok Float Ride Energy 2. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below. Give the video a thumbs up like, comment below with any questions, and share it with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.